A warm welcome to today's Talk Tuesday, the 23rd of August. Now, I want to talk about a new possible generation of antidepressant medication today because we've been looking at depression lately. And uh, it's also got massive implications for the pharmaceutical industry, which is probably uh, an issue uh, for some of us. Uh, this comes from things like this. This is from the Telegraph. Magic mushrooms set to become the UK's ultimate weapon against depression, or just to show I'm not biased, this one's from The Guardian, talking about psilocybin. So what is, uh, what is going on here? Is there going to be a boom in uh, psychedelic therapeutics? Um, I think there probably is because there's quite a lot of dissatisfaction with the current antidepressants we have, and there's quite a lot of dissatisfaction with the way people are feeling. I mean, I, I'm not particularly happy with the way I feel a lot of the time. I don't know about you, but um, to, to feel better would be, <laughs> would, would be good. And certainly people with anxiety, depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, addiction, they, they really suffer. M mental illness is, is really a, a great form of human distress, and anything we can do to alleviate that is good. Now, these are short-acting drugs, psychedelic experience and two-hour therapy session. Now, the idea behind these new therapies is that you have one of these psychedelic drugs, whether it's psilocybin or, or whatever it is, and that kind of unlocks things in your brain and you then have a therapy session that uh, helps you to unpack that. Now, I'm not quite sure about this. It does seem to be working, but the idea that you have this particular... Um, um, psychedelic experience is going to change your brain chemistry so I'm not quite sure whether it's the experience the phenomenological uh, sensed experience followed by the therapy or whether it's just a chemical effect of the drug on the brain I think that remains to be seen yet but this is the way it's happening at the moment so it's happening with the, the experience followed by a, a therapy session and, and the idea is this resets brain networks helping to uh, end uh, ingrained negative patterns of thought and makes patients far more receptive to therapy. So I'm certainly open to this idea, but we'll need more evidence to see if the therapeutic part is the more effective part or whether it's a, a chemical effect of the, um, of the, uh, the psychedelic substance. <laughs> now, th th this company here is called Small Pharma. Uh, now, I'm sure the, uh, the, uh, the irony, or not the irony, but the... Uh, the, the commentary really of uh, of small farmer versus big farmer. I really like the idea of it. Um, I don't like uh, being controlled by outside agencies any more than you do. And uh, the idea of small farmer, I find an attractive one. Now, small farmer here means this particular company called small farmer, but uh, small farmer as a principle also sounds like a, a good idea because most of the drugs we can make, the generic drugs we can make, are very simple to make. Manufacturers can set this up in no time and just sell them as generics. Why do we need to buy these from all these designated uh, companies when it'd be very simple for the government to set up, for example, an institution and make them ourselves? Um, so it kind of ties in with that quite nicely, really. Uh, leading the world's first regulated clinical trial. Now, the, um, the psychedelic substance they're using is DMT, which is a dimethyl trip, dimethyl tryptamine. Dimethyl tryptamine. Now, it does surprise me they're using this because my understanding of psychedelics, which is fairly limited, I must say, but my understanding of it is this is the this is pretty well the heavy guns here. This is a major uh, a major psychedelic uh, drug. So I'm a little surprised they've gone in for that. But they are looking at treating major depression which of course is a major problem. I've seen people in major depression in stupors. It's what you call a depressive stupor. And they, they can't get out of bed. They're brought into hospital and they just sit there and they're so depressed they can't do anything. It's a terrible illness. So the idea of this is for treating a major depression. And this DMT is, is, is pretty much the heavyweight of, uh, of psychedelic substances as I understand them. Now, uh, that's the molecule there, apparently, right? Uh, phase one trial has been done on healthy volunteers already. So this is in way, on, on, in its way. Next few months report from 42 patients. And if that's a, a good quality trial, and with 42 patients, it could well be, um, this could give rise to um, this being used as a new therapy, which would be uh, interesting and potentially beneficial for many people. Dr. Carol Routland, Chief Medical Officer, direct quotes, we think that this treatment will really get to the root cause rather than just dampening symptoms, which would be good. 
whenever possible, we want to treat the cause of a disease rather than treating the symptoms. We've talked about this before. If you've got a splinter in your finger, uh, you could give intravenous morphine and you could give local anaesthetics to take away the pain, treating the symptoms. Or, of course, you could pull the splinter out, which is treating the cause. So always much better to treat the cause than the symptoms. And the benefits, uh, she's claiming, are almost immediate. And based on initial data that we already have and other companies have, there's going to be a fairly immediate impact. So not waiting for a long time for uh, antidepressants to work. And again, the idea here that you could walk in with depression and a couple of days later be basically cured is just... Um, it just sounds absolutely uh, absolutely marvellous if that transpires to be the case. Uh, in terms of the psychedelic experience, we're talking about 20 minutes. But as I say, this DMT stuff is pretty heavy. So I am a bit surprised they've gone for that, but still. Uh, and, then in, uh, and then integration therapy. Afterwards, we expect the antidepressant activity to be extremely durable, lasting maybe three, four, five months. And I guess that's OK, because you can just have another preferably hopefully a smaller dose after that now i'm not going to go into all the research evidence at the moment but we've got imaging data that psychedelics work on the brain making neural connections more flexible brain plasticity that the brain can rewire itself to some extent now you can reset those networks in the brain which then leave the brain much more receptive to therapy which is why we're bringing it in straight afterwards so again the integration of the drug with the therapy uh, being the crux of the philosophy in this small pharma uh, company approach, which um, yeah, interesting. It's, it's, it sounds good. I'm not. I'm not knocking the psychological part at all. I just don't know which is which at the moment. But um, if it's working, um, you know, if it's working, that's what we need to know, isn't it? Now, this is the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency. Now, they've started this new thing: innovative licensing and access pathway. Bringing organisations together, speeding up the time to get meds to patients. So this seems to be a new organisation, innovative licensing and access pathway that can really speed things up and hopefully bring forward molecules which may already be known about. Molecules which might have been known before. For example, psilocybin molecule. People have identi only identified the molecule, I think, in the probably about the 1930s. Um, correct me if I'm wrong on that. But of course, the, the, the effect of this has been known for, for millennia. And that there's other molecules like this that could be used for new purposes. Uh, let me think. Yeah, aspirin, for example. Um, aspirin was like a painkiller, but people found it was also an effective blood thinner because it reduced platelet viscosity. Um, so, so that's good. Old drugs can be used for new purposes. So hopefully this, this will do that. And if it's working in this field... Hopefully it can be brought to bear in other drugs as well, bringing um, low cost generic molecules to the public where they can be therapeutic. Molecules which are beneficial to the public, not necessarily molecules which are going to make a lot of money for someone else. This is what we want in healthcare. Well, it's what I want in healthcare. <laughs> and I'm sure it's what you want. If you're watching these videos, it's what you want as well, depending on your employer. Um, psilocybin, uh, another one. This is a this is Clark and Well Health, another startup. Uh, th th they're working on psilocybin, which I would have thought is a more logical place to start. But as I say, I'm not fully appraised of all the information. But a small farmer having good results, so I'll accept it. Uh, psilocybin indicated for or evidence that it may be useful for depression, smoking cessation, and remarkable early results from treating people with terminal illness not curing the disease but massively reducing the mental distress which can go with a terminal diagnosis in fact often does go with a terminal diagnosis now the psychedelic experience out of body sensations visual and oral hallucinations uh, me i don't like the sound of that at all i do not remotely fancy going through that having said that if i was depressed then i would feel absolutely severely depressed i would feel totally terrible and to go through that for 20 minutes just like a trip to the dentist yeah i would probably accept it but is there an alternative to actually um what in the 1960s might have been called tripping or flo floating away for albeit only for 20 minutes of course highly highly supervised is there alternatives here well yes there does seem to be so this is a psilocybin microdoses demonstrated greater greater basically it's saying they worked 
Um, so here, here's the here's the reference for this um, indicating uh, yeah indicating that psilocybin might be effective improving mood and mental health at one month relative to non micro dosing controls. University of British Columbia psilocybin micro dosing now micro basically a micro dose. So if it takes if it takes a particular dose to have a hallucinogenic psychedelic effect, then a micro dose is at like a tenth of that or a twentieth of that. It's nothing like enough to give you this um, psychedelic experience. But is it altering the chemistry of the brain is the question. And the evidence here is suggesting that it is. Again, completely new approach to depression. Um, so psilocybin microdosing, repeated self-administration of mushrooms containing psilocybin. Now, <laughs> obviously, this video is for education only. I do not go out and pick hallucinogenic mushrooms, and I would advise you not to go out and pick hallucinogenic mushrooms either. This is purely for educational interest. Don't take anything that your doctor hasn't prescribed for you, obviously. Um, but they found a lot of people that were taking them already. So this, it appears that this movement has already taken off. Um, of course, I mean, genuinely, some mushrooms are poisonous. Don't do it. It really is dangerous. Uh, at a dose small enough not to impact regular function. So this is a small dose. People were taking uh, these three to five times a week, 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 grams. So that's 100 milligrams, isn't it? Um, of dried mushroom or up to 300 uh, milligrams of dried mushroom. But of course, the mushrooms are going to vary. The dose is going to vary. This isn't really the way to do it, is it? What we need to do, and we'll see this in a minute, is refine the molecule so we get the pure, pure drug. And of course, pharmacology is, is replete with this. People used to take uh, foxglove leaves for, for dropsy, what we now call edema. And later on, we found out it contained uh, digoxin. So we could extract the digoxin, get the pure digoxin, and then give a very precise dose because in healthcare we always have to give the right dose of the right drug to the right patient at the right time via the correct route. So uh, I don't like this idea of just taking so much of a dried product. I'd rather much have a, a pharmacologically defined dose. But this is what people are doing. So this is what they um, have got information from. So it's a naturalistic observational design, which is fine at this stage. Study approved by British uh, Columbia Ethical Committee, so it's all done ethically. Psilocybin microdoses, microdosers rather, 553 people were doing this with uh, hallucinogenic mushrooms, psilocybin containing mushrooms. Uh, non microdosing uh, comparators, 180, so they had good numbers to compare. Approximately 30 days, identified small to medium improvement with mental health in the people that were microdosing, and it was consistent across age, gender and the presence of mental health conditions. And interestingly, psychomotor performance was improved in older adults. So it was approved in older adults as if it's addressing, um, younger people it didn't improve psychomotor function, the fingers didn't become cleverer. But older people it did. And that's interesting because that indicates to me um, that it's, um, it's um, compensating for a deficiency of something. Uh, so there may be a deficiency of something, could be serotonin, in older people in certain parts of the brain. And uh, the, the microdosing of psilocybin somehow improved that. Now, the way that this study was assessed, the results were assessed. Um, this is a guide to depression, anxiety and stress called the DAS-21, Depression, Anxiety and Stress Scale. And I put the reference there. If you want to do your own, uh, you can do your own. All the questions are there. You can uh, fill it in for yourself and work out what your score is. Now, what they found here is pretty interesting. So this top line here, um, so, so the, the, um, the solid line is the non micro doses. So they got a bit better, but the dotted line is the micro doses here. And they got quite a lot better in terms of reduction in the scale. Um, so that that's that's pretty good. The the the, the so the um, the, the green one that's stress. Then the black one shows reduction in uh, depression scores. So uh, again, the people taking the micro doses were much less depressed 
uh, over the course of the study compared to those that weren't microdosing. And the red one is anxiety. So we see that um, anxiety in the non microdoses is basically flat, but we do see that it went down in those that were uh, microdosing. So showing reductions there in the depression, anxiety and stress scale. And of course, it's always good to try and quantify this and make it as objective as possible. <clears throat> and that meant, of course, they could do statistics on that, which is, is always a good thing to do. Um, another paper here, um, this one, adults who microdose on uh, psychedelics uh, report health related motivations and lower levels of anxiety. Let's have a brief look at this paper here. Um, again, the reference there published in Nature. Uh, now, this is a larger scale study, um, four and a half, four, four thousand and fifty micro doses versus just over four and a half thousand non micro doses. Uh, the micro doses, 85 percent took psilocybin, 11 percent took LSD. And so there must have been a few percent taking something else. But micro doses exhibited lower levels of depression, anxiety and stress across gender. So if this, these beneficial effects could be attained without the need for a psychedelic experience, I, I would personally find that a much more uh, appealing therapy because I don't want I don't want one of these weird experiences. Um, but if there's a chemical that can, can make me feel better, that would be that would be good. And if you're depressed, anxious or stressed, then you could need this even more. Um, micro doses were less likely to use alcohol regularly. Um, alcohol is probably the biggest problem in most of our societies in terms of uh, psychotropic drugs. Alcohol is a psychotropic drug. Um, the reason people drink is not because they like the taste. Okay, they, they might like the taste, but it's habitual. But the, the main reason people drink is it's positively reinforcing because it's a drug. It makes you feel good for a pretty short period of time, I must say. And it can give you a pretty bad hangover and it can have all sorts of negative effects while people are intoxicated. But the reason people drink is, is, is the, the psychotropic effect. That, that's the main reason people drink. If you took away the psychotropic effect from alcohol, I rather suspect that alcohol consumption would go down quite significantly. And it's a massive problem, but micro doses were drinking less and more likely to abstain entirely. Uh, I wish that I could abstain entirely. That would be great. Alcohol is just a nuisance. Uh, microdoses were more likely to abstain from the use of nicotine. <laughs> That's pretty positive. I mean, smoking causes what heart disease, lung disease, cancer, bronchitis, emphysema, peripheral vascular disease, cerebrovascular disease, ischemic heart disease, coronary thrombosis, coronary arterial atherosclerosis, angina pectoris, myocardial infarction. The, the list is endless of what smoking causes. If we could get rid of uh, that, that would also be uh, positive. And briefly, a final study here. There's many we could have picked. Uh, the therapeutic uh, potential. We'll look at that when we've just looked. No, there's one more we need to look at. That, oh, that's right. That King's College London, right? This is this, this we're looking at safe now. That, that they're reporting a study done in, under their auspices, <coughs> looking at psilocybin safety. So let's look at that one. Um, psilocybin in 10 to 25 milligram doses has no short-term or long-term detrimental effects in healthy people. So basically a phase one clinical trial that they've done here. That's the King's College report there. That's the journal article. Uh, now this is doses of 10 to 25 milligrams. And of course the, the micro dose would be way, way smaller than that. This is a dose that would cause um, a psychedelic experience, which I wouldn't want, um, but um, we could give way smaller doses than that. And uh, the therapeutic potential of microdosing uh, in depression, which is that article I've just showed you before, uh, that one, their therapeutic potential. Um, so this is uh, microdosing psychedelics in depression. Microdoses a twentieth or a tenth of the psychotropic dose, the tripping dose. So LSD that can re relate to about ten to twenty micrograms. Psilocybin that's one to three milligrams. And they report that can have subtle but positive effects on cognitive processing, time perception, convergence and uh, divergent thinking and brain regions involved in affective processing. 
So there you go. Um, this is going to be, in the next few years, this is going to be a major plank, I believe, in the platform for the treatment of depression. In fact, it could well, microdosing could well become the first line treatment because you can do that at home. GPs could prescribe you uh, one uh, or two milligram tablets of psilocybin, uh, take those three, four times a week and uh, people might be dramatically better. If you'd like this treatment now, uh, tough, you can't have it, it's not available. These are only available in clinical trials. So um, there is what's looking like a very effective treatment, uh, but you and I aren't allowed it. So there you go, that's the current state, but is this uh, a cause of optimism for the future? Yeah, I really think it is. Does this mean there'll be no place for selective serotonin uptaking inhibitors in the future? No, I still think there will be a place. I, th I think psychiatrists and uh, GPs will work out what uh, form of clinical presentation is best treated by SSRIs and what form of clinical treatment is, uh, what form of clinical presentation is best treated by uh, microdosing. And for the more extreme cases, the, the, the severe depression, uh, it might be necessary to resort to a, a psycho, uh, a psychedelic dose under close supervision, of course. Uh, as an inpatient or as a day patient, uh, followed by uh, psychotherapeutic interventions. So that's pretty hopeful for people that are really suffering, really suffering with uh, mental illness. It won't cure everything, but it's got the potential to be a major new therapeutic. So thank you for watching.